Scott Fowler. He was uh, representing the Charlotte Observer, and he had some questions to ask to David Tepper, or at least tried to, and he joins us on the program. Scott, let me go back to when Frank Reich was fired. What was your reaction to that? Well, I guess it had been coming a little bit, Dan, uh, only because I've been here since the inception of the Panthers and have watched uh, David Tepper work. He is not patient. Uh, he fired Matt Rule mid-season last year, and so when Frank Reich started 1-10, it did feel a little like Damocles' sword dangling there. I sort of thought he would get till the end of the year. Uh, he only got 11 games in a, in a four-year deal, and when I spoke with him yesterday, I think the only interview he's done so far, he did sound somewhat surprised, but he also said he had no hard feelings toward Tepper. What was the atmosphere at the press conference today? Very tense. Uh, you mentioned that I tried to ask some questions, and I did. I sat in the front row, raised my hand high. Unfortunately, they were calling on people as opposed to allowing people to shout out their questions, which I'm usually decent at doing, but uh, was never called on. I think that was purposeful uh, for, in my opinion, I'd written, written some very critical columns about Dave Tepper uh, over the past year or so, and so uh, that did not happen. He spoke about 13 minutes, though, and what did happen was he said uh, the buck stops here. Uh, he claimed he was a very patient man, however, uh, <laughs> and so that's a clip you probably would like to play at some point. But yeah, he said he was extremely patient in other parts of his business, and he hoped the next guy he hired would be here 20 or 30 years and would eventually give the eulogy at Dave Tepper's funeral. So he was thinking very far ahead there, and uh, you know, wow. he struck it a couple of times here, but he's got hope that he'll get it right this time. Does he realize he's the problem? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, as I wrote, I wish he would fire himself. And by that, I don't mean sell the team. I mean, just get out of the way, you know, don't don't meddle and allow the football people to do their job. And once you hire them, allow them some time. You know, if you say Rome's not going to be built in a day. Don't expect uh, the Coliseum to be halfway done after three months. I mean, they're, they've got a lot of work to do here, and now they just took a couple of steps backward. And uh, the thing that kept coming up to me and, and trying to find out, did Frank Reich really want Bryce Young, or did he want C.J. Stroud? And the role that the owner the, – the owner always does this. Well, owners can do this where they bigfoot people – who do their job the entire year, getting ready for the draft, then all of a sudden the owner is going to be adamant and say, no, no, this is the guy I want. Jerry Jones famously has done this and other owners, but what role do you think that David Tepper played in drafting Bryce Young? In that case, although there's a, you know, kind of a myth out there that David Tepper overruled everyone and and pick Young over C.J. Stroud. I'm not sure it's that simple. Uh, he did address that in the press conference today, Tepper did. And he did say that Bryce Young was the preference of, of every key coach and GM and scout in that room. Mm -hmm. And he could have vetoed it, but he did not. He also thought Bryce Young was better. Now, is that exactly the way it went down? I don't know. But Frank Reich has never told me in all our conversations that, oh, no, I wanted C.J. Stroud, even though C.J. Stroud's kind of a Frank Wright quarterback in terms of poise and height and all of that, he seemed very sold on Bryce Young and uh, remains so even now after, you know, Bryce Young's lack of development really, I think, cost him his job more than anything else. How desirable is this head coaching position? <laughs> well, Dan, put it this way. They're paying the last two guys <laughs> they fired. Uh, Frank Reich has a nice consolation prize of, you know, of a four-year guaranteed contract. He coached nine months. So he's got, you know, I don't know what it is, 25 or 30 million coming his way uh, if he doesn't get another job. Uh, Matt Rule, of course, they're still paying some money, too. He went to Nebraska, but there's some money at stake there. So in that way, financially, still very desirable. As far as winning, though, I mean, my gosh, if you count interim coaches, which I do because that's a little more fun, uh, The in January, they will hire their seventh coach since Tepper took over in 2018. Four head guys, three interims. Well, he inherited Ron Rivera who you could argue he may have he should have stuck with maybe the entire time. 
But in any case, this will be, it's been a lot. It's been about once a year, Dan, that we've been doing this sort of thing. Are they the second coming of Washington? <laughs> well, I'll say this for Dave Tepper. He doesn't have Dan Snyder's, um, you know, off uh, baggage. Off the field. Yeah. Baggage. Yeah. Exactly. No, I, I mean, I, I will give Tepper credit for, um, you know, he's changed the stadium around, the dynamics of Charlotte. There's all kinds of concerts in there. A lot of, he's a great in charity. There hasn't been the off the field baggage, but in terms of results and the spinning carousel of coaches, et cetera, uh, it feels a little like that. But, okay, he goes, he's a, he grew up a Steeler fan, correct? Right. And, why? and had, was a minority owner there. Okay. Yeah. Why wouldn't you model your franchise after the Steelers? Patience. Get the right know. guy. They've had, what, three coaches in the last 50 years? Right. Yeah. Tomlin still never having had – he's still looking for his Mike Tomlin. I mean, he keeps uh, – you know, he references the Steelers sometimes, but it it sort of is a hollow reference at these times because you've just – you've seen this over and over. He owned, also owns the Major League Soccer team here, Dan, and has fired two coaches in two <laughs> there. But he is a patient – man patient man i'd hate to see if he wasn't patient scott <laughs> uh i hope you get to ask what was your question that you were going to ask him uh it was i was just he was talking a lot about self-reflection so i was going to ask him uh, let's self-reflect just for a minute <laughs> you know you fired the last three coaches you've had you fired them all in mid-season and i just wonder if you ever look in a mirror and think is it me uh, am I the problem? I think he did a, a really wise thing of not calling on you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Keep, you might be right. Keep fighting the good fight there, Scott. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Dan. That's Scott Fowler. Been with the Charlotte Observer since uh, 1994.